Welcome to Arabella. This is number 11. This is Borders. I am so sorry this is going up late. I didn't even realize that I hadn't had Borders done yet. But we're going to talk about Borders today and how to put them on and how to cut the long Borders. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks to doing that. Okay, so let's talk about the proper way to do Borders. Okay, um, you have four fabrics, you've got four borders. This is cut two inches, three inches, four inches, and I think six and a half. Um, there is fabric in there that you can probably go up to seven and a half or eight inches. If this quilt is something that you absolutely need or absolutely want at 108 by 108, go ahead and cut these borders, you know, half an inch, half an inch, half an inch bigger, because as we know, when you quilt, send it to the quilter, it's gonna come back a little shrunk up because things get taken up in the quilting. So a way that you can keep the integrity of the size of your quilt is putting a little wider borders in. These aren't gonna change in size because you know they're set pieces, but these you can adjust with just a little bit of half inch, half inch, half inch, okay? Um, you can also take away borders. You are no, by no means stuck with this structure of borders. You can change the fabric colors around a little bit if you want, and you can change the size around a little bit if you want, okay? Um, I do recommend, however, following your instructions when cutting your pieces and when joining your pieces, you're going to join them straight. You are not going to join them on a bias, okay? Um, and that's just to make sure that you have enough length for this. Okay, so border, 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 border. Let's talk about how we measure to put on borders. Um, your instructions say to cut what two inches by 80 and a half. Okay, or however your width is supposed to be. I think it's 80 and a half. Um, yes and no. The 80 and a half is in a perfect world. In a perfect world where you have seamed everything at a quarter of an inch and each block has come out 12 and a half inches and we have put them together perfectly, uh, you're gonna get 80 and a half. What you really wanna do is, I put on side borders first and then the top and the bottom, okay? It's just visually, what is seems to manage better that you have the lines catch um, going across the top consistently. Okay, you know what I mean when I do this. <laughs> but what you're going to do is you're going to measure your quilt across the middle and then about a third of the way up and then the third of the way down. You're gonna take those measurements, you're gonna add them all together and you're gonna divide them by three. That is going to give you what you should cut your strip at, okay? Hopefully, there is very, 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 very little variation in between those numbers. Sometimes you can get one or two inches in variation between one set and the other, okay? But this is some of the purpose of what borders do is they help control the size of your quilt. It helps control any wonkiness or wiggling in the middle. So you're gonna take your first strip, you're gonna take your measurements, you're gonna get the average, you're gonna cut your strip to that average. You're gonna fold your quilt in half put a pin in it, it should be right around here because that's that goose, that's the middle of the quilt. And you're gonna fold your strip in half and you're gonna put that half right on the middle of your quilt. Then you're going to put the edge of your strip on the bottom and the edge of the strip on the top. And then from here, you're gonna fold the bottom to the center and you're gonna mark the center of that fold, right? When you bring this up to the middle, you're gonna get a fold here, you're gonna mark that. And you're gonna do that on the top. And you're gonna I do it again. So I usually end up from the middle to the bottom, I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five pins. And 
one of the things that I do at that point is, and then from here to the top, you know, there's going to be the same amount of pins, one, two, three, four, five. When I start sewing, I am going to sew from the middle, going down one direction, go back to the middle and sew up into the other direction. And the reason why I do that is if I start at the very top and I am easing and I am easing, hopefully this lines up, but it may not. There may be some shifting. And then I'm gonna continue go down. Well, there's gonna be more and more and more shifting and you're gonna get wackiness on the bottom, okay? By sewing from the middle out and the middle out, I am ensuring that any wackiness is halved. Does that make sense? Okay, so I do this on all my borders, especially on big quilts, especially on big quilts. Middle out, middle out. Then I'm gonna put the pink on the bottom and the top. Here's your key. Now you gotta remeasure before you put your brown border on. Measure your thirds. Now I'm gonna tell you, hopefully, cross your fingers, the difference in those uh, measurements is gonna be smaller. Okay, and then you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna mark your middle, you're gonna mark your bottom and your top, you're gonna ease that strip on, sewing from the center out and the center out. Okay, two sides, top and bottom, remeasure. Yes, you're like, no, I know, I feel you, I feel you. <laughs> Okay, but that's how to put your borders on your quilt properly. Okay, please do a favor to your long armors and put your borders on properly. <laughs> You'll notice that there's going to be a lot less waviness. There's going to be a lot less crazy variation on the end. Okay, next, this is the important one. Um, you have been given a very long piece of fabric. It's, uh, I think, like three and a third yards. And this is for your outside border on your quilt. Okay, and I got a call that says, how do you cut this? Because you are gonna be wanting to cut on the length of fabric. Um, now this applies to any time you have a big, long length of fabric quilt. Um, and there's a couple of tricks that I do. The first thing is I'm going to make sure that I have my 24 inch ruler, okay? I'm going to take my fabric. I'm going to measure about 23, 22 inches, leaving an inch on one end and an inch on the other, okay? And I'm gonna accordion fold on the selvage. So the selvage is your most stable point of fabric. It is also straight, right? If your selvage is not straight, meaning it's folded or has crazy lines, just go ahead and iron it out. Okay, but you want your selvage as flat as possible. You wanna accordion fold this. And in this case, it's gonna be accordion folded about five times. One, two, three, four, five. Oh my gosh, almost perfect. Now, this is kind of a miracle moment. 22 inches, five folds, landing up here. <laughs> Doesn't happen all the time. Um, in the case where you have this happening, right, where this is kind of in the middle, what I'll do is I'll stick a pin in here. Because what I really want, again, this is a miracle that it's like five, almost perfectly exactly is you want to have that selvage edge tight and straight, okay? So that selvage edge is straight across, all lined up as flat as possible. Now, I'm gonna take it like this and I'm gonna take it to my cutting board and I'm going to put it all on my cutting board as much as possible, okay? Um, we are gonna have to do some of what I call the fabric do -si do So again, salvage, straight, all lined up. I'm gonna try and give me as much room as possible. 
I'm going to look out for that hole. I hate that hole. Okay, so this is lined up straight. Here we are. I may have to either walk around the table to cut or I may have to turn the board to cut. Okay, but the goal is to leave the fabric as flat as possible. So I'm going to take my rotary cutter and my ruler. Um, in this case, this is a six inch ruler. Um, if you have a six and a half inch ruler, I think that's what it calls for on there. If your selvage edge is straight and this fold line is straight, when you cut, you are going to have a very long straight strip of fabric with very little what we call dog ears going back and forth, okay? And you can see, you can see that between this, just that selvage between here and here, it is very exact all the way up. And that's what we want, right? We want this measurement here between the edge of the fabric and the ruler, and this measurement here between the edge and the ruler to be almost exact. So I'm going to cut one strip here, okay? And then I'm going to cut a second strip. So that's two borders. I am going to reset my fabric from the opposite edge before I cut. Okay, so this is what happens, right? You're gonna cut this, this is gonna be very, very straight. You're gonna cut this, this is gonna be less straight. If you take a third cut, it is gonna be less straight than that. I know my selvage edge is straight, so I'm gonna cut two from one side and look, I have another selvage edge. So I'm going to set that up the exact same way I did the other side. So I'm going to actually open this whole thing up, refold it based on this selvage edge, and recut. Okay? So I get two borders on this side, two borders on this side. Now, your middle section you have a lot of room, is going to be your um, two and a half inch binding. You know, less worried about your two and a half inch binding being perfectly straight. It's nice if it's straight, but it doesn't have to be as straight. And, you know, take your two big chunks, re-straighten it, cut two strips for your binding, flip it over, re-straighten it, cut two strips for your binding. You'll be surprised, actually, by the time you cut the two strips, how weird this angle actually is, okay? But if you do two from one side and two from the other, you will get straighter borders, okay? So that is my handy dandy tip for cutting long borders. Thank you for joining us for Arabella. We will see you Next year for Wind Song, sign up now before the end of the year, okay? Bye.